uh, just clarify my uh, five points. Um, slight caution, I suppose. These points are mere postulates. I'm not actually putting these forward as anything remotely resembling a truth. Um, I would say maybe to all of them except for Cogito. That seems to be... well, I, I'd have a hard time disproving that one. Uh, although, to be perfectly honest, I'd have a hard time proving it too. But anyway, um, the other four are just postulates in a chain of reasoning. It's not to be taken as any kind of dogma or anything like that that, you know, I guess I was hoping I w we could discuss. And, you know, I've gotten some pretty good feedback on them. Uh, I, I like the way that, uh, that uh, I'm being questioned. Now, <clears throat> one important uh, clarification is that this point of view, this business of manipulating value, is not about putting on rose-colored glasses or gray-colored glasses. There's enough of that already. There's enough of people telling us that the world is a good or a bad place. And we could argue forever on that, whether or not the good outweighs the bad or the bad outweighs the good in the world at large. The value of the experience of the world, that's what I refer to here. Um, whether or not the world is a good or a bad place, or whether or not there's more harm than benefit or anything like that, is something one can argue forever. I don't think it's really all that arguable, although I would love to be challenged on this, uh, that experience, um, a good experience, or a positive experience, or a good feeling, or whatever you want to call it, is a good thing that a good experience is a desired outcome. And it's not even what one, what one could consider a desired outcome. One could say a good state of being is um, a positive state of being. It's a, a desired state of being. Even if we want, say, uh, something that is overtly a harm, say we masochistically seek to be punished in some way, what we're attempting to do is, say, reduce the amount of guilt that we feel by being suitably punished. Um, <clears throat> so, I've seen elements of this kind of masochism in my upbringing in, in, uh, uh, among certain, I hate to say this, but Catholic neurotics where they have a, a desire to suffer in order to expunge something. They want to pay, they want to go through unpleasantness in order to reduce the overall unpleasantness in their life. Um, the guilt is presumably uh, worth expunging, even if we have sort of a trial by fire here. We're walking through the hot coals to burn off the burden of guilt. So overall, the um, attempts to suffer are often attempts to have a positive experience, or attempt attempts at least to reduce the value of negative experience. It depends on, again, somebody pointed out earlier, um, one's willingness to do it. Um, we can say that if I willingly endure suffering, and my, my favorite example is the Spartans, the ancient Spartans. Um, they willingly endured hardship and suffering because their uh, view of virtue implied extreme hardness of exterior character to, or exterior, or hardness of uh, what that which faces the world, your body, I suppose, your will, your determination, whatever, um, in order to ensure the purity or the goodness or the virtue of the inside. <clears throat> the point of being a hard Spartan wasn't just to be hard for its own sake. Ideally, of course, it was to be a more virtuous person, inwardly. Now, that's, you know, again, that's sort of an, an interesting bit of um, looking into masochistic psychology, I suppose. Um, 
is are these people really seeking pain and suffering? No, I would say not. They're seeking uh, joy and pleasure or something in what looks like pain and suffering, but it's not. Um, it's unclear what a positive experience is, and we can't really illustrate it with 100% certainty. But we know what a positive state of being is, and we know what a negative state of being is. Although I shouldn't really say that in all cases, because I, you know, I've experienced a, a positive state of being. But <laughs> one of the most depressing thoughts I can imagine is the fact that there are people out there that don't know what a positive state of being is. I know that in a, in, in, a, in the case of depression, people often forget what a positive state of being is. But it is entirely possible, and this is, oof, this truly makes one shudder. There are pos it is possible, and I suppose it's statistically probable, that there are people out there that don't know what a positive state of being is. Um, well, I guess the only thing one can say in that case is, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we know that that's the way the universe is, that some people are left holding the bag. Um, it's not a case of a trade-off or anything like that. It's just that's the way things have panned out. Um, <clears throat> now, um, remember, though, uh, this is simply five postulates or four postulates, although I'm willing to, I guess, argue cogito, but it seems to be a little bit futile. Um, but, again, the main thing is it's... I want to make it very clear that reality, arguing about the nature of reality or the um, the tangibility or the overt events of reality, phenomenality, I guess you'd call it, is not the same thing as arguing about our experience of it. I think that we really have to sort of start, you know, stop thinking in terms of the two being um, the two being sort of identifiable as the same thing. Me eating an ice cream cone is not the same thing as me experiencing eating an ice cream cone. You can do a thought experiment to sort of um, uh, illustrate that. Let's say I'm a brain in a bottle and I'm getting all these impulses. A brain in a vat, whatever you want to say. Um, I'm imagining, or I'm getting fed a bunch of impulses that I'm eating an ice cream cone, but I'm not eating an ice cream cone. I'm actually just a brain in a vat. Um, no ice cream was uh, consumed at all, but I got the experience of eating an ice cream cone. And I placed whatever value on that uh, that I might. Um, and this value doesn't simply come from outside, from the feeling and the taste of eating an ice cream. I'm placing value on that myself, whether I'm a brain in a bottle or not. Um, this experience is something that matters to me, this business of eating an ice cream. I would say that whether or not it actually happened has less value than my experience of it. But I'll put it this way. Again, even when you're talking about a brain and a vat, you have to you have to remember that there's something else out there acting upon you. So you can't ignore the outside world. Um, even in terms of the brain and the vat. You can't just sort of say that it doesn't matter that I'm not eating ice cream. It, it, it is entirely possible that it matters more that I'm experiencing eating ice cream than actually eating ice cream. But it's, that's not to say that it doesn't matter um, or that what is actually going on outside of me is irrelevant. It's not. Because that can directly affect my experiences. There's still something out there that is transmitting information into this suspended brain in a vat that I'm eating ice cream. There's still inputs. That's the distinction I want to make. I'm not trying to be solipsistic here because I'm, it, it looks to me, again, I'm sort of agnostic about this, but it looks to me as though it's unarguable that what's going on in the outside world matters. I don't think we can ignore the outside world. But it looks to me in terms of value in and of itself, what's going on in here may matter more. 
we need to sort of manipulate the outside environment to the point where we control as much as possible, but that which we can't control um, is the stuff that goes on, or sorry, the stuff that we can't, we can control is the stuff that goes on in here. Um, this is going to take an awful lot more discussion, I think, and just, again, another little um, caution. Uh, this is kind of new territory for me, too, so this isn't something that I've, I've sort of um, thought through 100%. And I'm not trying to sell anyone on an idea. I'm more, this is sort of, a, I guess one could call this a, a narcissistic exercise in that I'm just trying to account for my own, or I want to sort of put some sort of, um, make some sort of sense out of my own existence in this, in this case. I'm just sort of postulating and seeing where this goes. <laughs> we'll see.